So, <laughs> I, I told you, Arden, that Brian would have been a better candidate, but he's got a longer distance to travel, I guess. And, you our budget. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, there's a lot of research uh, in, in patents which shows huge differences between different areas of technology. So Mike Moyer and I, for instance, have argued that uh, the patent system works well as a property system in pharmaceuticals, but that in areas like software and computers, it doesn't work well. Uh, most of the patent troll lit litigation, for instance, overwhelmingly is about software patents. Um, so I'm going to talk specifically about, so this, this is a bigger problem than just universities. Universities don't have a very large role. They're not the main culprit here. There's a bigger systemic problem. Uh, but it's still important to talk about, number one, what's the role of universities? How did, given, given the problems in the patent system regarding tech patents, software patents, uh, what is their role? What role do they play? And in particular, that's, that's important to look at because uh, as patent reform efforts have been uh, attempted in the last several years, universities have been one of the most outspoken opponents of reforms that, at least in my view, uh, would have helped uh, ameliorate this problem. So that they're, they're, they're a large, pol significant political player. Um, it, it, it behooves us to look at what's actually going on. So the, some of the best research that was done was done by Brian Lobb. I'll also refer to research done by uh, Mark Lemley and um, uh, uh, Feldman, um, Robin Feldman, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm getting, I must be getting old. Uh, so anyway, f from the perspective of the university, um, it, it appears, so Bri Bri Brian, Brian did a survey of uh, uh, electrical engineering and computer science uh, professors uh, and, and study the university's uh, patents in these areas, uh, it appears that there are significant, at least informal, incentives uh, provided to faculty uh, to patent in terms of uh, tenure, in terms of promotions, in terms of raises. Um, so the, from the standpoint of a scientist uh, and, and of the university, um, what are the possible benefits of some of this patenting? Uh, one is money. It may help fund more research. Uh, two is patents may provide some sort of way of encouraging research and perhaps more directly encouraging commercialization. Um, what Brian found out in, in, in this area at least, uh, the patents are not on average a source of money that in fact the average return in, on, on uh, the tech patents is negative. Universities are losing money on their, uh, uh, their uh, technology transfer efforts in this area, although it should be said that that's highly skewed, so that a very small percent of the licensing universities are making most of the revenue. So they're, the 3% are profitable. You've got 25% who have zero licensing revenues, even though they have licenses. Um, you've got a, a lot of them losing money. Uh, so first reason doesn't seem to hold much weight. Second, does it help, do these patents help spur research? So uh, ask the question, uh, does it motivate me to do more research? No. Does it uh, motivate me to do higher quality research? No. What about commercialization? There the picture is more promising. Uh, a significant number, almost half, um, thought that uh, patents helped commercialize their research. Uh, but it's still worth pointing out that the ones, it's still a minority we're talking about that found a positive effect. So it's not, at best, it's perhaps a weak incentive. So the, the flip side of this is uh, the, this problem of universities as patent trolls. Oh, so there, there are two ways that they, they seem to be playing this role. One is by asserting their patents without real technology transfer. Um, that's something that a troll does. And the other is by licensing to patent aggregators, which are trolls. So, you know, the, the, the poster example is the Eolus patent, which was 
uh, granted to a University of California researcher who went off and started a one-person company and, and began by suing companies. That, this was in back in 1993. They demonstrated uh, the ability of a, a web browser to use a plugin. Now, the fact is that that was something that had been done earlier, uh, it, so it wasn't, it wasn't novel. Uh, and it's a pretty fairly obvious idea to anybody uh, in computers, but nevertheless, uh, they got a patent and they actually uh, prevailed in their first lawsuit, which is, which is against Microsoft in 1999. Uh, they, in, by 2003, they won a $521 million judgment against uh, Microsoft, which was later tailored, but still pretty earth-shattering stuff. It sounds like big money to a university. Uh, it certainly sounds like a big loss to Microsoft. Microsoft settled for some undisclosed amount. And then a couple years later, Eolus went around and started suing lots of other companies. But by 2012, it was challenged by one of these companies, and the patent was invalidated. So you have this nearly 20-year history of you know, a bad patent causing damage uh, in the tech industry. Uh, university made some money on it, yeah, but perhaps not in a very good way. Um, you, uh, so, the um, in in terms of pat universities ex asserting their own patents, um, Lemley and, and Feldman um, looked at those situations. So, the, w one of the things is you know what a patent troll does is is it goes out, it threatens to sue you, and says you know pay me some money. Uh, and I won't sue. And, and so what you're buying is not actually technology. You, there's no transfer of knowledge. You're not fulfilling the university's knowledge, you know, mission there of commercializing their knowledge and making it available and distributing it to society. You're just getting money. Uh, what, what they're buying is a, a promise not to sue. So, th so they looked at the extent that, that university demands to private companies uh, were accompanied by evidence of knowledge actually being transferred. So one question they asked was, did it lead to new products or features? No. Uh, did it lead to transfer of technical knowledge in terms of things like know-how? No. Uh, did it lead to personnel being transferred? Uh, so you know, very typically when there's a spin-out, uh, graduate students will go and take jobs and, and they'll help transfer the knowledge that isn't contained in the patent, the tacit knowledge. So it, it, it doesn't seem that, uh, it, at least in terms of asserting patents in this field, uh, you know, and again, biomedical stuff may be entirely different, in this field that universities are really playing a, a very positive role. Um, so th the um, universities have also played a role in terms of licensing their patents to patent trolls or what are some patent aggregators, which are companies that buy up lots of licenses and then threaten to sue companies. So that I think fairly early, the, the universities became uh, aware that there were on occasionally thin uh, ethical ice, uh, and, and, and they, the autumn put out a uh, uh, a statement that many universities signed that universities would better serve the public interest by ensuring appropriate use of the technology by requiring their licensees to operate under a business model that encourages commercialization and does not rely primarily on threats of infringement litigation to generate revenue. That's a nice statement. Uh, Intellectual Ventures is the largest patent troll, the, the largest patent aggregator. They have patents from over 60 universities. Um, many of those universities are also investors in, in intellectual ventures, so they, they get a financial benefit uh, when intellectual ventures threatens to sue people. Uh, Caltech alone exclusively licensed 51 patents to intellectual ventures. So there's some real, um, I think, you know, questionable uh, behavior going on by universities in this area. Uh, while there's no doubt, you know, the university actions are very small compared to the to the big players in in the in the patent troll world. Um, still, it's it's very troubling that they are contributing to the problem, 
by their own actions and also troubling that they're contributing to the problem by uh, playing a role in terms of their political influence, in terms of uh, playing an obstructionist role in terms of, of uh, a significant patent reform that might help ameliorate the problem. Thank you.